Hello and rebonjour. It is December 2020 and I'm back out on the streets of Paris. Partly because I can't legally go anywhere else at the moment, um, but also because, well, earlier this year I made a video about the fake building facades in the city. And I think at this point a proper YouTuber is supposed to say something like, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. Uh, but to be fair, you probably have seen it because YouTube spammed it to about half the planet. Anyway, towards the end of that video, I said this. There are, in fact, at least another five fake facades in Paris that we know about, so there's more to explore, but for today, we'll end our tour here. And at the time, I was genuinely planning to just leave it there, because how many people really are interested in fake Parisian building facades? And then this happened, and here we are. So today we're going to try and find the ones that we didn't see last time. And you know what? We already went past one of them in this intro. So let's go and find five more fake Parisian building facades. We're starting here in the neighbourhood of La Villette in the northeast corner of Paris because on this road there is an EDF electricity substation that they've tried to disguise as an office building so that it fits in with the rest of the street. And if you think you've heard me say that before somewhere, then you'll know we're not exactly expecting a work of art. See if you can spot it. To be fair to EDF, if there's one thing we can say about number 14 Rue du Vergier, it's that it's not quite as bad as the one in the first video. And as usual, it's up to Paris's public transport company, the RATP, to show them how it's done, because there is another electrical substation hiding on this road, and this one is a lot harder to spot. Number 54, Rue des Petites Écuries, looks like a classic, beautiful Parisian residence, but it isn't, as you can tell if you look closely at the front door. In fact, this site supplies power to the trains that run beneath us here on lines B and D of the regional express network, running through the same tunnels that needed a ventilation shaft that's hidden behind another fake facade that we visited in the first video. By the way, the addresses of all the buildings in this video and the last one are listed publicly on this Wikipedia page, so today we're just ticking off the ones that we didn't see before. And next up is another electrical substation over at number 141 Boulevard Diderot. But here, even the RATP seem to have given up on disguising it. I feel like this one barely qualifies for the list. No one's trying to pretend that that is a normal building. But before people start commenting about how maybe I shouldn't use Wikipedia as my main source of research, let's hop across Paris to the northeastern corner and the neighbourhood of Batignolles. This is a relatively quiet and residential area away from the main tourist hotspots. In fact, back in the day, it used to be home to the painter Edouard Manet, as well as former Wales and Swindon town left-back Paul Bode. 19th century French engineer Paul Baudin. But round the corner on Rue La Condamine, one of the houses is not quite what it seems. And again, you could easily go past this one without noticing anything weird. But no one lives at number 78. What you'd find behind those windows is a big server farm. In fact, googling the address brings up the website of a French data hosting company who pride themselves on storing their data physically in France and being 100% French. And they're called, let me get the pronunciation right, Global Service Provider. Oh putain, c'est fini, on jette l'éponge là. And that leaves us with one final fake facade to find. And, well, it wouldn't be a Tim Traveller video about fake facades without a ventilation shaft. So we're heading back up towards the Gare du Nord, just around the block from where we finished the last video, because number three, Rue de la Caduc, is another part of the whole Gare du Nord ventilation system. This time, it's for the underground platforms on line E. However, in this case, it's only the first floor of the building that's fake. The rest of the floors are real including, apparently, the garage. So while I quickly get myself out of the way, that's about it for fake facades in Paris. I'll put a link in the description to a Google map that shows you where you can find all 11 addresses that I visited in the two videos. Please do comment below if you know any more, or if you know some in the city where you live. Otherwise, feel free to do what everyone did last time and argue about whether or not facade means fake, and if it does, then isn't it redundant to say fake facades? Whatever you want to do, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.